Just in time for the new school year, a brand new medical training lab set to open at a Milwaukee high school. The main task at hand is registering people for September's Race for the Cure and starting the fundraising now. The turnout overwhelming and certainly gratifying for the organizers. Whitney and Mike, after we heard from so many witnesses, now we here at CBS 58 News can let the viewers see exactly what happened. We're celebrating another turkey donation here. Here's the lucky bobblehead recipient. Hello, sir. What's your name? Where are you from? My name is Mercedes. I am from Peru. Uh, oh, wonderful. Muchas Thank gracias. You. Thank you so Thank much. You All right. Take care and have a wonderful holiday. Oops, I'm sorry for holding up the line. Thank you for coming out. This kind of happens. We just want to thank people personally. So uh, we're here and waiting, and there's plenty of company for the drive through food drive. Oh, we are fantastic, Mike. The kids here from Nova High School, part of a basketball camp here in Pep Nation. They're always here, but look who dropped by. None other than NBA champion Bob Dandridge of the Milwaukee Bucks, the only oh, championship they won in 71. What's your message to the kids? My message to the kid is is education. Uh, don't don't be concerned about what's going on with all the adults. Uh, set some early goals for yourself because your goals are achievable. Of course, I was blessed to have played in the NBA, but everybody. And we are blessed to have watched you. I know you got to mentor these okay. young people. You know, Mr. Dandridge is here actually to receive an award from the Fellowship Open, and he usually does this kind of mentoring in quiet, but because CBS 58 has been a longtime sponsor of the Fellowship Open, they allowed us to take part of this very exclusive moment. We couldn't be more grateful, and we'll have continuing coverage today coming up on the news at 4. For now, live in Moody Park, the coolest park, I'm Michelle McCormack, CBS 58 News. Oh, Bye. that was a great get seeing Bobby Dandridge, the Greyhound. It's been floated that you would be an excellent pick for Donald Trump's running mate. What say you? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm flattered by that, but I don't know where it comes from. Okay, I'd be honored to serve in a Donald Trump cabinet, more so in a policy-making position. Uh, an example, maybe Secretary of Homeland Security. The sheriff tells me he's releasing this portion of video at this time because it shows the public what really happened without hindering the investigation. It takes us back to Sunday evening right here along Milwaukee's lakefront. A driver makes an illegal turn. A deputy tells him to pull over twice. We want to warn you, what you're about to see could be sensitive for young viewers. <laughs> Now, while releasing the video, Sheriff Clark said he couldn't really take any questions because he thought that would impede the investigative work that's currently underway. But before he left the room, I had to ask him, how about that earlier radio announcement he made that he's leaving to take a job with Homeland Security in Washington, D.C.? He turns the microphone off in the middle of our exchange, but you can still gather enough from his reaction. So since uh, you can't talk about the investigation, can you talk about moving to Washington? Yeah, you don't want to nope. leave with this happening, right? You don't want to leave with this still going on, do you? Can't talk about it. Would it be prudent? And there you have it. Our media availability was over with Sheriff David Clark, who is now forwarding the video that you just saw here. First, now to the Waukesha County Sheriff's Department, which is in charge of the investigation into what happened here on Sunday. Word spread through the west side of Milwaukee. Anthony Pettis was working out in his quest to reclaim his title in the sport of mixed martial arts. His partner is Duke Rufus, who's continued the family business by providing a place to go for personal excellence in a sport that requires discipline and grit. Nestled between a bank building and a Buddhist center, all who come here and survive amidst its rigors become closer for having shared the experience. As we like to say, the family that kicks together sticks together over here. So family that plays together stays together. We have a lot of fun and, you know, get that stress out. It's okay, nobody's saying you can reach the heights of Anthony Pettis, but here at Rufus Sport, they really do encourage people to give it a try. The combat sport allows you to actually connect with your workout. 
and see things about yourself both inside and out. You learn to really believe in yourself, confidence building, and you learn to set goals. Those looking for a challenging workout walk among the kids just looking for something to do other than roam the streets. Pettis, their role model, having overcome some odds himself to achieve glory in the octagon. Everybody leaves their shoes at the door and walks in an equal. Respect is earned, and it's that atmosphere that has drawn the likes of CM Punk. If you're an aspiring mixed martial artist or if you just want to kind of get a better quality of life fitness-wise, I think this is the best place on earth to come to. It's top three, you know, gyms. The actor and star of the wrestling world now embarking on a transition to mixed martial arts, creating a social media sensation in the process. I think life is for living, and it's all about challenging yourself and growing as a human being. And as Pettis has shown, and CM Punk soon may, the road to glory goes through Milwaukee. We'll, we'll, we'll come back, and I'll, you can interview me if I get a title shot. All right. All right. I, first. Yes. An exclusive. None, number one. You're, you're <laughs> at the top of the list. Harvey is far from finished with Texas. Forecasters say that this storm continues to batter parts of the state with relentless rain. In Houston, the nation's fourth largest city, federal officials are asking for the public's help to rescue thousands. Kenneth Craig is in Houston with the very latest. An Appleton native now living near Houston is awaiting the birth of her second child. She's due on Saturday and is worried with all the flooded roads she won't get to the hospital. So I feel like I'm trapped here and <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. I tried calling my doctor's office and getting the on-call doctor, but it just keeps ringing and ringing and then it hangs up. So I'm kind of at a loss here. Amy Fleming hopes the baby holds off until the water starts going down. She doesn't have any water in her house and she is keeping her fingers crossed. She says she might just have to resort to the next door phone app to send out a message if it becomes an emergency. The folks in Burlington certainly can relate to that sense of helplessness felt by the people of Texas. It is a long road to recovery after a natural disaster. CBS 58's Julie Parisi with how things are going so far. A man was shot and killed in a triple shooting outside of a nightclub in Milwaukee's south side. New at four, his family is speaking out and to CBS 58's Amanda DeVoe, who joins us now with their hope for justice. Amanda. We're back now in the CBS 58 Ready Weather Center with meteorologist Rebecca Schold. We're all mindful of natural disasters, seeing what's going on with Texas and what can develop yes. anywhere. Yeah. In today's Health Watch, nothing can tear at the fabric of a family more than the sudden death of a child, either through miscarriage, stillbirth, or dying shortly after arriving into this world. But there is a program at Aurora West Allis Hospital called Resolve Through Sharing. A Michelle Minster, a registered nurse who runs the program joins us along with Sarah Dominguez. You and your husband were part of this group when you lost Ty. Yes. And one of the most uh, emotional things that you shared with me is the baby box mm -hmm. that they presented to you. Explain a little bit about that. Um, what happens when you lose a child is um, the nurses know that you're not going to go home with anything and going home with empty arms and an empty heart is gut-wrenching in itself. So what they've done is they've created um, a memory box and they put inside of it um, molds of your baby's feet and hands. And this and is from your son, This is Ty, my son, yep, these are my son's feet. Born. And the unique thing about what they did with the hand, the way they positioned um, his hand. She told me uh, our nurse um, made his hand like, uh, so he could hold my hand, so he could hold my thumb. So when I put my thumb inside of it, it was like he was holding my hand. Just a beautiful gesture. Now the group Resolve Through Sharing meets every Wednesday? Yep, the, Wednesday? First, the first Wednesday of every month. And so we meet at um, 7 to 9 in the West Dallas Hospital. And we, um, it can be for anybody, moms, dads, um, grandparents, us. You might have a significant other um, support person that you would like to bring with them or bring with you. and. Um, it's just to provide support for people that go through this kind of tragedy. At any time. It could be 20 years on from the loss of their child. It could be just two days. All are welcome. Definitely. Sarah, what was the positive impact it had on you? Because we hear so much that this can break up couples. Yet you have two other children. Right. Well, um, we had a son before our loss, and then we did have a son after our loss. Um, and our marriage went through a lot of ups and downs. Um, and the statistical rate is like 70 percent of couples that lose children end up end up on, on the divorce side of it um, but we committed to each other that we didn't want that to happen and we said oh, we're gonna go right away so three weeks after we lost our son was our first meeting 
And when we came in, there was um, four other women. So the, I think the most important and the best part about this group is that no matter who you are, no matter what your status, you're all in the same situation. And when you enter that room, you are being validated. All of your feelings that you have, whether it's anger, whether it's sadness, whether it's grief, whether it's extreme guilt, whether it's being numb to everything, um, your, your feelings are validated by the other women sitting there. And by one sharing her story or a, a dad sharing his story, somebody else is uplifted or understanding more of that situation. It's, it's helped us in our marriage. It's helped us in our relationship. It's helped us with other people. And it's helped us ter tell our story without that, that heavy burden of sadness all the time. I can tell my story and at the end of it, I can, I can smile because I'm, I'm proud of myself, I'm proud of our family, and I'm, I'm proud that I got to say my son's name again. It's important just to either talk about it or to listen. You don't always have to share, but can reach some resolution by listening to others share. Right. Thank you so much, ladies. I'll be putting more on our website at cbs58.com.